Have you ever seen a train race by and wondered how that massive chunk of metal stays glued to the rails? It looks effortless, right? But there's a secret at work. It turns out the real magic is hiding right under, or rather in, the wheels. Now, trains have been around since 1804, and back then, they were the hot new thing from the Industrial Revolution. Before trains, people used wagons pulled by horses, which were slow and bumpy. No wonder steam-powered locomotives could haul tons of people and cargo way better. At one point, tech got fancier, and trains did too, along with their wheels. I mean, have you ever noticed that train wheels aren't flat? They've got a slightly cone-like shape, and it isn't just for looks. It's the secret sauce that keeps trains from doing a backflip off the tracks. Without that little curve, trains would slide right off the rails the second they hit a turn. You see, the conical shape helps trains do two big things – stay balanced and handle curves. If the wheels were just round, everything would be fine on straight tracks. But such round wheels can't self-correct, so they don't naturally keep the train centered on the track. How are conical wheels different? The two sides of each wheel are slightly different sizes, and the wheel automatically shifts its contact point when the train turns. The bigger side grips the track more, helping the train lean into the curve. And the smaller side spins faster to keep everything smooth. So back in the 1800s, trains didn't have this magic design. Their wheels were just lame cylinders made of cast iron. It might sound tough, but such wheels actually broke all the time because, well, trains are heavy. Once engineers got tired of picking up broken wheel bits, they upgraded to wrought iron in the 1830s and later to steel in the late 1800s. Now, steel was a total game changer. It was stronger, smoother, and perfect for faster trains. But the shape of the wheel was still an issue. Early trains used flat wheels. And when they went around corners, they wobbled like shopping carts with a busted wheel. I bet you know what I'm talking about. Not ideal for a massive metal machine. Then came the flanged wheel, invented way back in 1789. There was a little extra rim on the edge of the wheel to help it grip the track better. It's like bumpers in bowling, but for trains. That rim kept the train from wobbling off into the countryside. Fast forward a few years, and another inventor decided to make things even better. In 1814, he added flanged wheels for his Blucher locomotive. And the conical shape, the perfect combo of balance and stability, was the next development. And to this day, trains still use those conical wheels. They help massive metal machines cruise around curves and glide smoothly down the tracks. So we get it, train wheels are cool. But how about stopping a massive metal beast speeding down the track at 200 plus miles per hour? Well, that's where magnetic track brakes come in. They don't rely on the wheels at all. Instead, they use magnets to grab directly onto the rails like giant metal claws. When the train needs to stop in a hurry, these magnets fire up with electric current, stick to the rails, and create so much friction that the train slows down extremely fast. Because they always go full mode, magnetic brakes are mostly used for safety or emergency stops. You can see them on high-speed trains zooming up to 170 miles per hour. And some fancy setups even go as high as 220 mph. At the same time, they are not the main service brakes for high-speed trains. Most often, those are eddy current brakes. That's when a magnetic field stays still and a metal disc that isn't magnetic moves through it, gradually slowing down. But let's get back to magnetic brakes. How do they work? Well, inside the brake system is a giant electromagnet. Imagine a big iron sandwich wrapped in a ton of copper wire. When electricity flows through that coil, the magnet turns on and sucks itself down to the rail. The harder it sticks, the more friction you get, and friction is what turns all that train speed into heat. Poof! energy gone. Of course, engineers had to make sure this system doesn't quit during a power failure. Now, that would be bad. So if the main power cuts out, the train's batteries step in to keep the magnets working. 
Another cool thing is that when these brakes grab the track, they also clean it. Yep, they literally scrub the rails, which helps the regular brakes grip better afterward. Now, let's talk about curves again, because train tracks aren't always straight lines through the countryside. Duh! So, when tracks bend, the outer rail is raised a little bit higher than the inner one, like a racetrack. This little tilt is called super elevation, or just can't, and it helps the train lean into the curve instead of trying to fly off it, like you would while riding a bike and going too fast around a corner. What does this can't do? It spreads the train's weight evenly across both rails. It also cuts down on wear and tear, because replacing rails is expensive and nobody wants that. Can't balances out that sideways throw you off your seat force when turning and makes your ride way smoother and comfier. The thing is, when a train takes a curve, physics comes into play. The faster it goes or the tighter the curve, the stronger the push to the outside. But raise one side of the track and gravity will start pushing back in the opposite direction. Balance restored. Too little can't, and the train squeaks against the rails. Too much, and slow trains feel like they're climbing a hill. Engineers have to find the sweet spot – just enough tilt for the fast trains without making the slow ones miserable. If a slow train takes a curve made for high-speed ones, it'll lean toward the inside rail. Faster trains, on the other hand, will press against the outer one. Either way, that side pressure wears down wheels and rails, and in extreme cases, it can even cause a derailment. That's why freight trains and high-speed passenger trains usually don't share the same curvy tracks. To handle all the stress, the tracks and curves are built together, with more closely spaced sleepers, also known as railroad ties, and extra ballast underneath. Basically, they're kind of, you know, bulked up. One more thing. You know that famous clickety-clack sound people always imagine when they think of trains? Well, hate to break it to you, but that's mostly gone. Today's trains glide along in near silence, with no rhythm and no clack, just a smooth whoosh. So, what happened? Did the trains just get quiet? Eh, not exactly. The tracks did. Back in the old days, rails were built in short chunks, about 39 feet each. You couldn't haul super long pieces easily, and the gaps between them helped the metal expand in hot weather. When the wheels rolled over those joints, you get that clickety-clack sound. And every single clack was actually a tiny punch to the track. And those millions of hits added up. Rails wore out faster, trains wobbled, and maintenance crews had nightmares. So, in response, the era of modern engineering started. Instead of short rails bolted together, most new train lines use continuous welded rail. That's long, smooth ribbons of steel welded end-to-end. -end. Imagine taking all those little rail pieces and melting them into one giant metal snake that stretches for miles. Those welded rails make the ride smoother, faster, and way quieter. They also last way longer, because there's no constant hammering from the wheels. But wait, you might think, doesn't metal expand in heat? Well, that's true, but that's where the magic comes in. Engineers install the rails at a special neutral temperature, usually on a warm day, so that when it gets hotter or colder, the steel barely moves. The rails are clamped down so tightly with heavy fasteners and surrounded by tons of crushed rock called ballast that even when the metal wants to stretch, it can't. It just builds a little tension inside. Yet even though the old sound might be gone, what we get in return is way better faster trains, safer rides, and tracks that don't rattle themselves apart. The next time you're on a train gliding through a bend or coming to a smooth stop, just remember, it's all thanks to a combo of magnets, physics, and some smart design solutions that keep tons of metal moving safely at ridiculous speeds. Woohoo! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.